Hey YouTube, uh, another Womble blog. This one's a little bit different. Uh, technically speaking, nothing here really is uh, Wombled, but uh, more stuff I've got from eBay. But it seemed to me that the distinction between uh, crap I find on the internet and crap I find on the streets is sufficiently small that wasn't really worth making it another category. Um, but I actually have got a couple of little bits here I've got from the London Hacks place as uh, a three weeks bin. Um, but uh, yes. I just thought I'd uh, show off a couple of interesting little bit finds. Uh, actually, that one picked out the motors being because I noticed it had the same micro stepper, this tiny little mic stepping motor. That uh, I already have one of these, so I've got a pair now, which means I can do something interesting with that. Uh, but yes, I've been buying things off eBay again, not necessarily the best idea. Uh, oh, by the way, behind me, animatronics uh, mannequin working on slowly. Uh, that's more to do with my business side of things. Uh, if you check my other channel, which is uh, Starborn Works, you can hear a lot more about that. I hope the video quality this time around is a little bit better. I've been experimenting the settings a bit. Turns out the camera actually has a setting for uh, sharpness. It's actually called sharpness, not blurriness. Um, which, for some reason, was turned all the way up. Don't know why. Uh, those, yeah, just some... Uh, a set of servo savers, uh, nothing particularly interesting there, except that this Tamiya ones, um, they've actually got uh, servo horns for the old square, the old uh, square uh, splines, which is nice because I've got a couple of those antique servos. Uh, salvaged that from the, the aluminium tub. It's not the first bit I found in there, and I just had to stop it from getting used as scrap. Uh, but yeah, that should be a match uh, to another couple of bits, and might make something interesting with that as well. Uh, com cable, not serial cable rather. Uh, tape drive, again, no use as it is, but I did notice this has, you can see in there, there's a hole through the PCB. I can see the stepper motor in there, which means this it's identical to one again I already have, so I've got another pair of of, uh, small steppers there I can use for small projects. Uh, they're just, they're just the, the, the oh, odds and ends there, it's had to show off. The interesting bits are uh, here. This one was a bit of a silly buy. It's a brand new case, brand new <gasps> digital camera! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why it only cost me three pounds? Because it's shit, that's why. I actually looked this up before bidding on it, and frankly, bidding on it was a bit of a silly thing anyway, because it does sound rubbish. The only review I could find of the thing had gave it one star, and I, I can see why. The I thought I was buying something that might be alright and a bit broken at first, but uh, it's, the guy selling it said he thought it didn't have... It's like his lens was missing, his lens was damaged. Uh, taking the lens cover cap off, though... Oh, it'll come off. No! It's got a pinhole lens. I have webcams with lenses better than that. This webcam has a lens better than that. So God knows what this is. It didn't come with a charger either, so the odds of actually getting it running seem pretty slim. Uh, I got AV outputs, got a headphone output, and an unmarked socket, which I presume will be power. This will find out, or it might be just for. Uh, it does seem to have a battery. I'll go into this one in a separate video though, because it's not worth uh, wasting the time on it. I might try and see if I can pull that lens off and fit something better to it, because all that to turn that tiny little lens. It does have a screen on it. It might be good for some parts. It might work. The battery seems to be in here. It looks like a cell phone battery. So, might be able to find a charge for it. You never know. We'll find out. Find it later on, if nothing else. A few quid for a nice little bag and some cables, that doesn't seem too bad. It does seem like it's ne almost never been used, but from the reviews I can imagine why it wasn't used more than once. I haven't really looked at the side pocket yet, what we got here? A mains adapter? Ah! Oh. Well, why didn't they say they can power it up then? I suspect, I might find out later. The best bit though, I finally uh, found a set of these in the UK. This is an X-ray cassette. Technically, it's an, it's an X-ray intensifier screen cassette. Uh, what you use? These are used in old analog X-ray machines. You put the film inside them, and you would have to expose someone to a lot of X-rays to actually get an image to show up on a regular piece of film stock. 
So what these do is they've got a coating in them that fluoresces, it, it lights up when it's hit by x-rays. So it acts as a way of intensifying the amount of effect the x-rays will have on the film. Now I don't really do any actual photo um, developing, but this is going to go quite nicely with the dental x-ray machine that I bought off eBay last year. And I'm intending to rig this up as a crude CAT scanner. I'll take the cartridges apart here, the cassettes apart, and I'll have them set up so they have the x-ray source over here, beaming across an object onto there with a camera behind it picking up the image and hopefully automated so it steps a turntable around in front of it which will in turn go to a computer which will in turn produce an image. And I've been looking for these for about eight months but none have turned up in the UK, they've all been in the USA, second hand ones. And um, in the USA of course postage is cost several times more than the item itself so I really haven't been, you know, for something that's a bit of a gamble, really didn't want to to invest that much of cash in it. In the extra machine itself only cost what 18 pounds on the trip to collect it. But uh, all in all I bid on several lots from the same guy and got this one which is 30 by 40 centimeters which is the largest. Got another 24 by 30 centimeters, 24 by 30 centimeters, 24 by 30 centimeters and these ones are all Curix by Afga and we've got one here by Kodak. Now I seem to recall from someone else's, this is actually quite heavy, they're quite <sighs> heavily, heavily built. I do recall seeing uh, someone who was doing uh, just single frames uh, using X-ray machine, using these, that uh, not all X-ray cassettes are created equal. Some will have different grain sizes in the uh, phosphorescent screen, which means that you basically get a it depends on the definition of the image. Also, some are more sensitive than others, so I've got to find out which one of these will be the the boat. The unit. I've got a way off. Will even if they're not the best quality, will they still fluoresce enough to be seen by a digital camera? If they all will, then I can just go ahead and pick the uh, best one that's also got the finest grain. I'm really hoping the large one has the finest grain because. Obviously then I could fit a much larger object in a makeshift CAT scanner. And of course that would be obviously fun to use to see inside things, but also possibly useful for things like uh, 3D printing. If you wanted to create something, I mean, there are 3D scanners out there that uh, can do a surface scan of an object and turn that into a 3D model which you can then go along to print, but there's nothing there it can really you've got to know it's there already, if there's voids inside, any special spaces, and this potentially has a way of doing that. It's also be good for reverse engineering things, things that are potted up solidly in resin. It'd be good for working out why things are broken without having to dismantle them completely, because obviously a lot of things these days can be very densely assembled. But yeah, that's going to be another project, and it's going to require obviously a lot of lead to make sure it's safe. I'm going to, need to test them as well, that'll probably be an out of the room experiment. I mean the the actual x-ray machine has a remote trigger on it of course so what I'll probably do, end up doing at some point is uh, connecting it all back together leaving a couple of these, the two different types open in front of this camera turn off the lights, leave the room press the button once briefly, come back, check the footage see if either of them lit up visibly if they lit up in this room being you know a bit dim and they're noticeable, they'll be easy enough to see on a digital camera but it'd be nice if I can, uh, obviously, if, if the, more, the more sensitive they are, the less x-rays you have to use, the less duration you have to use. But uh, also means that uh, you can get through much denser materials, because if uh, materials are absorbing a lot of x-rays, then it's, you're going to need a lot more x-rays to make it through. And if it's more sensitive, you need less to make sense of it. So you get the idea, you get the idea. But uh, yeah, looking forward to using those now. That'll be something fun. I'm hoping that they'll uh, get a uh, good use at uh, the... Oh, pardon me. Hmm. I'm hoping they'll get um, some decent use uh, in the sort of burgeoning uh, hack spaces sort of vacuum radiology department where we're having sort of high-end physics stuff at some point. Uh, I've actually got... down there. Uh, I've got the diffusion pump which I'll hope should be cleaning up uh, maybe this weekend, so I want to be videoing that of course as well. I'll put that up as a separate video, a little bit less bloggy perhaps. 
But so yeah, so like you see that? Ah, fun things, fun things, good advancements. Um, uh, oh yes, I also did pick up a new set of scales. Uh, that's more a business thing, but uh, I am going to be trying modifying the set of uh, kitchen scales, see if I can get an extra, extra digit of resolution out of them. Um, never tried it before, can't hurt to try. There is only a fiver, so it's not an awful lot of money wasted. But uh, I like getting a, a fractional um, resolu resolution in grams, so that way I know when I'm getting up to whole grams, because so I tend to do when I'm doing resin casting, it's not in uh, large quantities, so I do need to kind of like know when I'm going to hit full grams. But uh, anyway, I'll go with that and move on to the next video. I've got a bit of a clean up in here, and I'll probably also be putting up a video once I've done more cleaning up of items I'm be getting rid of. That'll probably pass on to London Hackspace uh, mailing list to see if anyone's interested in stuff there. Because I've been doing uh, work on the wiki there, trying to tidy that up, and it'd be nice to sort of start spring with a bit of a spring clean, both on there and in my own personal workshop. So, anyway, uh, take care, and I'll uh, catch you later. Ta ra!